Good morning, Monday morning. I have not vlogged for like a week and a half. I was in Vienna and San Francisco in back-to-back -back meetings, so I did not bring the camera with me. Today is going to be awesome though, heading now to Tel Aviv to meet Shaul Omer, the CEO of Playbuzz, a massive internet company, of course, founded by an Israeli here in Israel. I've been in touch with the guy for easily five, 10 years, never sat with him, so pumped about that. And then meeting the Torah Tech team, a one-year gap program for American students come to Israel to combine technology and Torah. So, you know, kind of up my alley. Pumped to meet them for lunch, and then back to Beit Shemesh to meet a friend, Yaakov Kony, who works at Cisco, talk about a big idea that I had and kind of executing on that idea. So it's a very geeky, very exciting day. Here we go. Sarona, looking for the Playbuzz offices. Been here a thousand times, never even realized they were in Sarona. Not exactly sure where I'm going, but I'll find it. Well, as Tel Aviv days go, it's kind of gross today, actually, but Sarona is still beautiful. I'm walking in here into, into Play Buzz and I meet like these. <laughs> this is the most random thing. Wait, who are you? Hi, I'm Anat. I'm uh, Asaf Shulman's wife. So, Asaf Shulman, who but, is like, I'm, I'm like the biggest fan of Asaf. So he, 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 did he announce that he's, he didn't announce yet? Because like they're all over the news now, Coin Mama. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're not going to go there. And who no, are you? No. Well, ask, ask her what she does. Okay, wait. So, so Asaf, okay, what do you do though? You're Asaf's wife, but beyond that, what do you do? Because you're much more important than Asaf. Much more important. Yes. I'm doing uh, product work for uh, Playbuzz. Awesome. She's like a product whiz. All yeah. right. She's amazing. Wait, what's your first name? I even asked. Anat. Anat. Okay. Awesome. awesome. And you? I'm Ravit. <laughs> Ravit. Uh, and also, another half, yeah. Married to a legend. Who's your husband? <laughs> Ronnie Coutil. Oh, okay. Culture yeah. CEO. I feel, I feel like both, they were both on the vlog. Saf has been on the yeah, vlog yeah, and Moon's yeah, been yeah, on the yeah, vlog. Yeah, I love it. Know, we know. And I think awesome. Ron so I think you with Asaf. And by the way, you know that Kaltura is a sponsor of the vlog. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Vlog, yeah. No, but in that, uh, did Ron told you about Asaf on that vlog, I think. No. Yeah, yeah, I know, Asaf yeah. 100 years. Really? Ron's the one that can. Ron, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. So yeah. random. I didn't know so. that. All right, I'm turning this thing off now. <laughs> This is a meeting, I would say, easily five years in the making. Well, long overdue. This is not straight. There we go. Now it's straight. Okay, so I, I've been following as someone who loves to hear about Israeli companies that are dominating markets. I love, I love the story here. I'll be honest with you. I mean, Playbuzz is, you know, you, you told me one statistic, and I'm going to shut up because I want you to talk. You told me one statistic that just blew my mind, which is that in, see, 2015 yeah. and 16, Playbuzz was the most shared website on Facebook in the world. That's true. And you were six people on Rothschild Boulevard. That's true, yeah. I mean, that, that's, you understand how outrageous that is, right? That's outrageous. All right, let's, let's start from the beginning. Who are you? What's All your right. name? I'm Shaul Olmert, and I'm from Jerusalem. There you go, I love uh, that. And uh, I feel like I live all over the world right now, but uh, Jerusalem is always my home, so Dude, that's me. I love you already. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a big Jew. I mean, I, I also grew up there in Jerusalem. I'm from New York to Jerusalem. But um, Okay, so you started this company, Playbuzz, seven years ago? Yeah, seven years ago. And, you know, we talked just now, and like 80 things that you said resonated with me so deeply. Deeply. I feel like Playbuzz is me on scale, at scale. Because, oh, wow. I mean, think about it. What, at the end of the day, why did you start this company? Uh, simply because uh, I love uh, the internet. I love uh, finding cool content, cool activities, cool experiences on the internet. And I felt like uh, content can be so much more. Content can be elevated into an experience, into right. something that uh, people actually enjoy consuming. I feel like uh, when I read an article today, it's almost like a chore. It's like, oh no, I have to actually read those 5,000 words and it's right. like so exhausting and I end up not doing that. Uh, I don't know if you know the statistics, but uh, people spend an average of 8 to 15 seconds on a web article today which means that essentially nobody reads ADD and uh, I feel like yeah I feel like content should adjust to people's consumption habits and you can create content that people will choose to engage with and will have fun engaging with and will actually learn something right. and have a meaningful experience because the content whoever created this content bothered to um, translate it to their language 100%. you know serve it in a way that resonates with uh, with the way they want to consume content 100% so I think you know and I, I have many friends that are journalists so I'm 
being careful here, but there's a reason that traditional journalism is suffering. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because they have not adapted to the way people consume content today. And, and I'm not saying, yep. by the way, it's, this, is a, this is like a major pet peeve of mine. I'm not talking about like, oh, you know, I'm building a mobile optimized site. No, no, I'm talking about a different philosophy, right? Yep. We have, you know, you showed me an amazing video of the way, pe the way teenagers and millennials act. Mm -hmm. It's a different world. It's not only teenagers, teenagers and millennials, you know. I, uh, I'm, as a father to, uh, to a teenager, I have to say that uh, it's, it's us as well. You know, people have changed and many of your journalist friends are trying to win today's war with yesterday's weapon. I mean, they still create right. content in the same way that it was created 50 years ago, or I should say 500 years ago when print was invented. Right. And they're trying to win uh, the most scarce resource in today's world, which is people's attention uh, with those tools. You know, I don't think they're going to be successful. And, so. and, and to that the increased amount of noise out there yeah, totally. It's, I mean, there's insane. content everywhere today. Right. And if you want to, you know, when you look at the way uh, uh, kids or young people, but uh, pretty much everyone right. consume content today, uh, they go to Instagram, they go to Snapchat, they go to places that reinvented the art of storytelling and made it very accessible, very visual, uh, very personalized. So our goal is to bring the same tool set to everyone. So uh, everyone, including legacy publishers and uh, uh, storytellers at large. So it could be brands, advertisers, uh, influencers can really have access to this amazing set of tools that just enables them to create content that people really choose to engage with and enjoy. Okay, so tell me a little bit about, because I, again, I know Playbuzz from from all over the place, but how big <laughs> is this company? Give me some numbers. Like, what are we talking about? How big is this empire? So we are uh, reaching north of half a billion people every month uh, with our content. And it's not content that we created, we created the platform, the tool set, and it's being utilized by uh, more than 16,000 different websites, apps, publications, as well as uh, thousands of uh, brands. So, uh, you know, the way we make money is that uh, just a lot of the world's biggest brands are using Playbuzz on a daily basis Incredible. to create experiences. And uh, those experiences create higher uh, brand lift and higher purchase intent for people who consume those ads Incredible. than any other form of advertising, basically. Incredible. And just from a purely um, business perspective here, how much money did the company raise? What, what, what's announced? I don't know if you told, what you told me is public information. Yeah, yeah. we uh, raised a total of uh, $51 million uh, in equity. And, um, uh, you know, now uh, our investors are uh, signaling to us that it may be a good idea to start making money by ourselves. Mm. So we, we, took, uh, we took note of that. And really the focus of the company is to become a profitable company, which we're on pace uh, uh, to uh, catch up with, uh, hopefully by the end of this year. Wow. And it's, um, you know, that uh, little idea we had seven years ago has really become a business, so uh, it's great. You know, I, I just one word on that, because I think that's something that a lot of times maybe people that aren't, that haven't built companies have a misconception about. You know, just because a company's not profit, doesn't make profit, does not mean they're, they're not a success. And let me explain what I mean. I know that sounds very weird, right? Yeah. But I often talk about a lemonade stand. A lemonade stand, I'm eight years old and I make a lemonade stand. I need to go to the supermarket and buy a table and a tablecloth and the lemonade and I'm investing in the business. I'm losing money right now by, by buying those materials, yeah. but that doesn't mean I'm not a success. I now have to build the, the, the thing, build the actual lemonade stand and start selling lemonade. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you've been you've been focused till now on expansion, on growth, and now you're going to become profitable. Yeah, I think we haven't even scratched the surface of uh, the company's potential. I mean, you know, we work globally with uh, with um, a lot of big brands to tell their stories, and you know, we, there's there's so much more growth potential here. Incredible. So I think it will be stupid to uh, try and uh, uh, run down the coast and optimize the operation so we can uh, cross the uh, you know red ink line and become profitable right now. Right. Uh, I think that what we're doing right now is investing in the foundation that will make us a much more profitable and much larger company right, in the right. future. The foundation, in other words, I, I, when Adam Newman came to Israel a couple of times ago, I went to hear him talk, and someone asked in the crowd, like, are you profitable? He said, we're not profitable, but if we want to be profitable, we'll just put on the brakes yeah. and stop expanding, focus on profitability, and we'll become profitable. Right now, we're, we're the fastest growing real estate company in the world. We're expanding at an incredible pace. Tomorrow, we could be profitable if we wanted right. to. So you, till now you've been focusing on scaling. Now you're gonna, it's incredible. Listen, the, the bottom line is, you know, I, I I've been a fan for a long time. Thank you. I, I really I, I said it like half jokingly, but I mean it. at the end of the day, you guys have mastered the art of storytelling in the modern era. That's that's really how I how I view Playbuzz. Thank you. We're is honored. That, is that that's, a fair? That's definitely our goal. So yeah. so 
you know, it goes without saying, if I can help with anything at all, absolutely it would be, it would be an honor. And uh, I'm very happy we got the chance to do this, but it should not have taken us 10 years. So, you know, we'll <laughs> yeah, do let's, hope, let's hope our next meeting is before yeah, 2029. No, but I feel like we've exchanged probably 300 emails over the years. Yeah. Right? But uh, listen, bottom line is really keep it in mind. Anything that pops into your head that I can, you know, maybe Hillel can help, just, you know, you see how fast, you also respond to emails very fast. Perfect. Yesterday you were like, I, I didn't even hit send that I got a response from you. But listen, uh, keep it in mind. It was fantastic to meet Sounds you. Good. Thank you for your time. Right, thank you. Building a rocket ship. But go back to work, man. Thanks. Thanks. Visiting the Torah Tech guys eating sushi. How's it going, guys? You're right. Made on their own. The boys themselves. Where are you going? Where are you going? What are you shit camera shy? No, not at all. We got you some swag. Get out! Oh my god, this is really nice. High quality oh, stuff. Oh, I just want to know right now what what size did you get me? Because this our relationship depends on this right now. Um, it is a slim fit small. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Ooh, yeah. This is nice. Look at this. Yeah, yeah. High quality stuff. It's not a joke. Large. All right, man, you did okay. You did okay. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> who are you? Who are you? Look at this good looking guy. I'm Shlomo Chen. I'm not that good looking. I'm a Juno, so. Is that how you pronounce your last name? Chen. Chen? Yeah. It's a good thing I didn't like say that just now. That would have been embarrassing. You would have yeah. said Cheyenne or. No, I would have said Chen. Chen. Yeah. No, it's Chen. It's Chen. Yeah. Chen. Why, is it pronounced, why is it written that way? That's super bizarre. So I'll tell you uh, 200, 200 years ago when my great great grandfather moved from right, Russia. Uh, come on. It's too long of a story, man. Yeah. But I'm telling you. He basically they asked him, what's your last name? He said, Hang with a heavy like Russian accent. Those glasses though, look at those glasses. Man. I know that Hillel would like the glasses. Those wooden? Yeah. Are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fake wood. Fake wood. Yeah. Nice. All right, we're gonna go eat. You got yeah. join him? We'll go. Yeah. We? Two, you had one job. You wanna jo so join us? All right, I'm turning this thing off. It's hurting my arm. So Torah Tech, talk to me. What's Torah Tech? Torah Tech is a gap year program. Um, is that like, by the way, I always wonder about that, gap year program, is that, a, is that like a term that everyone in the world understands? Uh, everyone in America understands it, but here in Israel they don't really have a gap year. We also don't like calling it a gap, we like calling it an opportunity year, especially with this kind of program. So basically it's between high school and college? Exactly. Okay, got it, that's the gap. Where the guys uh, come here and they learn Torah half a week, and the other half a week they intern in incredible high-tech companies, or not only high-tech. So they get to experience the real Israel? The real Israel. Because it's the Holy Land on the one hand, and Startup Nation oh, on the other. Wow. He, he, right? He hit it up. You hit the nail on the head. You get, you get all the kind of elements and components of Israel. Every element of Israel. Exactly. I love it. The beauty, the culture, the Judaism, the everything. I love it. How, guys, do you like this program? Oh, yeah. Woo! Are you just saying that because he's here? Not at all. You having a good time? Where are you from? I am from Overland Park, Kansas. Oh. I actually, I lived in Florida for three years, and I helped you with your presentation when your computer wasn't working at uh, KYHS. Wait, wait, wait. Come on. What? KYHS. What's at that? their new building, Katsushima High School. Where's that? What city? Boca. Boca. Yeah, you can. You were the IT board. guy. Yeah, and I that's funny. It. That's really funny. Yeah. What's your name? Marcus Cohn. Nice to meet you, Marcus. Again. You follow, guys. follow at Marcus Cohn photo. Okay. M A R C U S. M A R C U S. M A R K U S. K U S. C O H N underscore photo. Beautiful. On Instagram. Yep. Cool. Joseph, put his link right there. You guys, enjoy your sushi. I'm not gonna bother you, we're gonna lunch. Yeah. We're gonna have real food. Okay, so I think combined, our brains right now are at 15% capacity. <laughs> Maybe. <The> combined. <laughs> the steak that we just consumed. Wait a second, I think I have a picture of it. Let me just see if we can get this on camera. That steak was, I mean, what word would you describe? How would you describe that steak? That was Divine. It was obscene, that's what it was. Yeah. Let's see if we can get it on. Let's see if we can get that thing. That's the steak we just ate. It was ginormous. How was hey, it? It was good, you, right? You should show what we didn't eat. We were very good and we didn't eat the sugar. We didn't eat dessert. Yeah, yeah we were. <laughs> okay. So this is, I feel like, we should have done this a long time ago. It's yep. true. It is? It's your fault, not mine. It's, these are super cool. What? Why is this my fault? Because you didn't invite me. I don't know. What do we think? Okay. Who are you guys? I'm Shlomo Chen from Tel Aviv. Spelled, spelled Chayin. C-H-A-Y-E-N, yes. Okay, and you're? Yudi you Goldberg. Yudi Goldberg, okay. And? Where are you from originally? What is originally? I don't know, where are you from? I was born in Harbor, yeah. but yeah, and then <laughs> when I was two, my parents came back to Israel. Wait, move up a little bit, because I want to make sure that we're all in focus here. We're okay, we should be okay. Okay, good. So from, where are you saying again? Say it again? <laughs> there we go, we're all, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, get comfy, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> where are you saying? Say it again? 
I was born in Bell Harbor, Bell Harbor okay. and then my parents moved back to Petah Tikva when I was three, two Got or three. It. And you? Sake, New Jersey. Sake, New Jersey. And you've been in Israel how long? 32 years. Wow. 11? 11. See, I remember that. Listen. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's just jump right in here. After high school in the Jewish world, and correct me if I'm positioning this incorrectly, a lot of students come to Israel for a one-year gap program, gap year program, before they go back to college in America or wherever, um, to learn, oftentimes to learn Torah, sometimes to learn about Israel, sometimes a mixture of both. You guys are taking a different angle here. How's that? Is that a good introduction? Great introduction. No. What is your angle? You want to answer? Should I? Please. So, oh, guys, don't fight. Um, our angle is basically bringing both worlds together. Yep. Where I think it was Rav, it was the Rav Soloveitchik that when he started YU, he said Torah and Avoda, that we should learn how to combine both worlds together. So let me give a little background here, because that's, I mean, to you, to you and me, that's, you know, we understand that concept, but, you know, in theory, Judaism is a religion, and so, you know, one might say the ones that are the most religious are the ones that aren't involved or worldly involved, but our belief in our, let's call it, sect of Judaism is, no, there's actually an ideal to be involved in creating and, you know, being productive, and Torah, which is one side, and Avoda, which is working, and so you guys have embraced that to the umpteenth degree because you are building an entire program to embrace tech and Torah. Yep. Can you call it? Torah Tech. Torah Tech. What's the website, by the way? www.torahtech. I gotta stop you right there. What is with the www? Torahtech.co. <laughs> Why do people say that? I, World Wide Web, man. Yeah, but if you, were, you know, if you don't write www, you still go to the website, right? Get out of here. Like, why, why do people say that? I never, that's, that's like well, hours right. of my life no, that you just saved. Let me tell you why I think that's funny. Because on the radio, right, you pay for time and get all these stupid commercials. www. I'm like, why'd you just waste all that time? Let's say somebody was only coming in at that minute, you know? Now they know we were talking okay. about a website address. Okay, so torahtech.co? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Is that because torahtech.com was not available? Correct. Is that something that you, have you researched whether you can acquire that? Yeah. It's not available. Not right. Now. Okay, but, but you're yeah, on, it's on, it's on our list. It's in the plan. All right, so how does this take? What, 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 talk, walk me through this. How does this work? So, there, like you said, there are the gap years uh, where some are very focused Torah, like mm -hmm. come and sit for six days a week and learn 12 hours a day, and there are the ones that are more connect to Israel, travel, maybe intern. Or we wanted to bring all worlds together, yep. not a David, but a like a Chila, not either or. Stop talking like that, man. These, these tech people. I'm Who sorry. Heck, you're talking about David and Chila. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's it's meaning right. it's not. It's not. You know. Oh, okay. We'll compromise. It's actually an ideal. Right. To combine it's, Torah? It's not either or. We say either or no more. We want to have both, best of the, both worlds. Meaning we want a brilliant uh, uh, Jewish leaders that are very involved in their worldly and daily pursuits and also very involved in their Yiddishkeit or their Jewish uh, heritage. This guy is Yiddish. Listen, here's the thing, right? <laughs> I, I said before, and it's very true, I think, you know, listen, Israel is a very... A dynamic country and a very, you know, there's a lot of stories, a lot of identities to this country, but two primary identities obviously are one, the Jewish aspect, and two, the tech aspect. So you guys are really embodying, is that the word? That those two elements, which in theory, you know, other people have not thought to combine into one program and saying these American kids, are they all American by the way? Or are they yep. all American? Come, come to Israel, but don't just sit in a study hall and learn 12 hours a day because, let's be honest, you all have ADD, but learn X amount of hours and also, you know, become an intern at a tech company, start building your career. And by the way, that's another selling point, which I have to say on a personal level. I remember when I went to Yeshiva back in the day, I was like, oh my God, for the next five years, I'm not starting my career. You're actually giving them a head start on their career. For sure. It's another selling point. Connections, really, really amazing internships, and the Beit Midrash itself, as you saw, is in a shared workspace. Yep. Where they can create connections, where they can get to know the company. It's kind of also both our worlds. Yep. Yodi coming from the digital marketing world, I come from the more Jewish rabbinic world, and connecting them together. For Shout out to uh, Merckspace and Sapir for hosting them. Thank you. Know, you. You guys are I guess, partners in your partnership. Yeah, partnership. Yep. Super cool. All right, so bottom line is, if someone's watching this and they're, in theory, your target audience, sell me on Torah Tech. You have a year ahead of you to focus on yourself, to focus on who you want to be, uh, both as a religious Jew and as a professional. What we do is we give you the platform, we give you the real life simulation to come in, to take advantage of those nine months, to get your best out of the Beit Midrash and out of all the questions that you might have leading up to now, and also to be out there networking with the real world, uh, accomplishing, learning, uh, growing on a professional level that you would have no other opportunity to do that anywhere else. Super cool, torahtech.co.
it. Love it. And you get to hear me speak. All right, guys, this was awesome. Thank you so much for lunch. I'm happy we got to do this. We should have done it a long time ago. And we'll put something on the calendar, get me to come talk to the kids, if the guys, not kids. And uh, I'm looking forward to watching this thing scale because that's the end. Of, at the end of the day, you're looking to scale this thing and you know build beyond a, a gap year program. Anybody who wants to learn Torah in Tel Aviv while they're you know working in a tech company, want to take half an hour off to learn some Torah, you guys are going to be the, the edges for that. Girls program coming soon. Oh, love it. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank the time. You. Appreciate Thank lunch. That steak was bonkers, man. Thanks. <laughs> that was a pretty incredible day. Tomorrow is going to be back to back in Serona with some of my favorite people. See you then.